So it looks as if Easter is a goner. Um, the question we have for you, you're guiding 950 million euros of a loss to the end of March. Just how cautious is that guidance? Is that, is that your worst case scenario or could it get a lot worse from here, Michael? Good morning. Good morning, Henry. No, it won't get any worse than that. You know, we're very close to the end of March at this point in time. We've given a range of 850 million to 950 million. I think it'll be towards the lower end of that range. Uh, and that's because of all the COVID travel restrictions. This morning, we're announcing Q3 numbers, traffic down 80%. Uh, and despite that, we're still carrying three times more in the third quarter than most of our competitors. But nobody's traveling. Uh, the uh, restrictions mean that Easter will, will essentially be a write-off. That would probably leach into a slower Q1, the June quarter, for us. But looking through that, you know, I think we take great heart from the fact that the UK will have vaccinated most of their over 50 population by the end of March. The EU is running a bit behind that, but we expect them to catch up by about the end of June. Uh, and I think we can look forward into the, the main uh, summer peak months, July, August, September, a reasonable recovery of traffic there. And then I think by September, October, we'll largely be out of all these uh, travel restrictions because of the success of the vaccine rollout. Where's Ryanair, Michael, good morning, when it comes to these vaccine passports? Is that something that Ryanair would want to require? Uh, no, but Anne if but governments bring it in, I, we'd happily adopt it. But, you know, I think the vaccines are going to come in such a flood over the next couple of quarters. You're going to see essentially most of the EU population vaccinated. Certainly the high risk groups will be uh, vaccinated in the UK before the end of um, March, in the European Union before the end of June. At that point in time, we see no reason for any restrictions. But if governments want vaccine passports, we'll happily apply vaccine passports. But I think you're going to see almost the entire population of Europe vaccinated by the end of September, or if not that, you're down to the very young segments of the population who are not at risk from uh, uh, coronavirus anyway. Michael, what's the risk of vaccine snobbery? I'm sitting in Dubai. I've been fortunate. I've had the first start of my vaccine. Many people here are taking a variety of vaccines, from Pfizer to the Chinese vaccine. Vaccine snobbery, is that a risk? I don't think so. I mean, again, you know, there's kind of been a lot of issues here in the European Union and the UK over the weekend over the slow rollout of the AstraZeneca vaccine control over the uh, the volumes. You know, th there's going to be three or four more vaccines uh, licensed by the European authorities, I think, before the end of February. They do need to catch up. The European Union has been slow in licensing vaccines and very slow in rolling them out. But as production catches up, I think you're going to see a a dramatically accelerated rate of vaccination across the European Union. And that is the point where we are released from these restrictions. Remember, these restrictions do not limit the spread yeah. of the vaccine. They're designed to protect the elderly in our community and the hospital services. Once you've vaccinated those high-risk groups, there isn't really a reason for locking people down. And I think and in tourism uh, in the uh, July, August, September period. Michael, your numbers for traffic was 83% year on year falling. You're talking about the fact that we could potentially see summer, this pent up demand really starting to come into fruition. What kind of capacity levels are you anticipating sure. for the summer into year end? Yeah, and it's very difficult to, to judge at this point in time. You know, I think we're looking to something between 50 to 70% of normal traffic in that key. July, August, September quarter. Now, it could be a little bit faster than that. It could be slower. It depends on the, the, the speed of the vaccine rollout to the end of March and then to the end of June. And once, and then it requires the politicians, once you have all the high risk groups vaccinated, stop locking people up. Let's, everybody, let's get back to work. Let's get back to some degree of uh, normalcy. Um, uh, but it's very difficult. I mean, I, I think the critical thing about Ryanair is we've been using this crisis, though, to you know reduce the cost base. We've announced this morning a four-year extension of our low-cost uh, agreement with London Stansted Airport now runs out to 2028. Just before Christmas, we announced an increased order with Boeing for new, slightly lower-cost 737 deliveries. We'll take deliveries of 200 aircraft over the next five years. More than sufficient for us, not just to return to what we previously carried in 2019, which is 150 million passengers, but to grow to over 200 million passengers over the next five years. 
And we're already in active discussions with a whole range of airports across the UK and Europe, many of whom want to work with Ryanair to recover their lost traffic, or customers that have gone bust or day have cut capacity at those airports. So we see a very strong recovery for Ryanair, both towards the summer of 21 and more importantly into 22, 23. What does that mean for your cash burn, Michael, to the end of this financial year, i.e. March and through to the mid-year? You're quite bullish on the vaccine. You're quite bullish on the reopening scenario. So what's your cash burn? And are you going to have to raise sure. any more capital is the analyst questions, I suppose. We don't think so, Manus. I mean, we are sitting on about three and a half billion in cash at the moment. We don't see a material change in that number to the end of March, uh, other than we have to repay the UK government. We have a UK government loan of 600 million. That will get repaid uh, at, at the end of March. Uh, we're still in a very strong cash position. We raised about 1.2 billion from shareholder and debt markets in September. Uh, and as long as there is that reasonable recovery of traffic into that uh, the key summer quarter and into next winter, mm -hmm. then very strong positive cash flows will remove the need for any further cash raisings. If for some sort of reason that we don't currently foresee vaccines are hugely delayed or unsuccessful, then we may have to revisit that. But nothing we see at the moment in our recovery through the remainder of 2021 will require additional debt or additional equity financing. We're very strongly financed. We're very excited about the, the growth opportunity we see. And we're ready to pounce on those growth opportunities as soon as European government lift those restrictions. And remember, I think short-haul travel will recover strongly and quickly, long-haul, I think particularly into Asia and the Southern Hemisphere, where the vaccine rollout will be considerably slower, uh, will take a much longer period of time to recover. Michael, I wanted to get your sense on what's it like doing business right now in the German aviation market Lufthansa com with Lufthansa competitors now that the government is pretty much the biggest shareholder and it's regular. What's the state of that situation and how do you feel about that market? I think it's very difficult, Anne-Marie. You know, the, the challenge for uh, uh, Ryanair in a market like Germany and all of the competitors is you have Lufthansa now has a state-funded monopoly. They were allowed to buy Air Berlin. They've been allowed to buy up all the smaller German airlines. And at the first sign of a crisis, they get about 10 billion in state aid from the, uh, the, 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 the German government blatantly anti-competition, completely distorts the market in Germany. But, you know, we are where we are. German consumers and visitors will still want a lower fare alternative. Uh, Ryanair will be the airline providing that low fare alternative in the German market. Uh, and there are German airports where, you know, Lufthansa has significantly cut back their capacity. They will focus all of their efforts on their Munich and Frankfurt hubs. Uh, and the other German airports will need Ryanair. Uh, to deliver them growth and to recover the traffic they've lost because of these uh, huge and unprecedented Lufthansa cutbacks. Michael, you mentioned, you know, you're ready to take opportunities, you're ready to grow the business. How or where is the biggest opportunity for you? You often come on and say, look, there's going to be a carrier go to the wall. We've already seen one or two instances of that. What are you ready to do? How do you grow it as you come out of COVID, Michael? And the critical thing that we do to grow, man, is, is we need to take new aircraft deliveries. You know, clearly all of our capacity was full in 2019. That capacity will refill, I think, pretty quickly towards the second half of 2021 and into 2022. There is huge suppressed travel demand in Europe. People want to go back to the beaches of Spain, Italy, Portugal, Greece. They want to travel to see friends and family. They want to get back on the road doing business again. So there's huge pent up demand. Huge capacity has been taken out of the system. We've had the failures of FlyBE, Air Berlin, and uh, um, Thomas Cook and those other airlines. Um, so I think there's going to be a very strong recovery. But that recovery will be led, and Ryanair is the one airline in Europe that has 200 aircraft, new aircraft deliveries scheduled, slated in over the next five years. We're the only airline that can go around to European airports and say, look, we're taking 50 new aircraft next year. How many of these aircraft do you want? And the recovery and the opportunity, Manus, will go to those airports who respond quickly and aggressively with recovery incentives yeah. and discounts.